So hello everyone. Welcome to this new session. So today we are going to discuss with one more important concept of force. This is force. Okay, if it's not visible, I'm telling you force between differential current elements. Okay. Yeah. So this we are going to discuss, and uh, uh, along with that, uh, we have left a few topics in the module three. Okay. It's a very simple and small topic. So magnetization and permeability and uh, magnetic field intensity. Okay. Those two topics, uh, along with this, we are going to discuss. Okay. So I had left that topic. I had forgot to do it. So please, uh, let's uh, do that topic now. So before that, let's uh, do this topic. That is force between differential current elements. So this is very very important. Uh, uh, asked question in the exam multiple times repeated. Okay. So this is the simple notes that uh, uh, I have got. Okay. So I'm just going to explain this now. So now what is this force between differential current elements? Okay. So we know that in the work that mentioned it as differential current elements. So we can see that we are having two of the differential current elements, I1 dl1 along with I2 dl2. Okay. And uh, the path which is separating the differential current, uh, the current element is called as R12. So here we can see these two lines, and here we have drawn one path that is called as R12. This is represented as loop one, and this is represented as loop two. Okay. And these are the two differential current uh, current elements uh, which are have. Moving in the opposite direction, that is, this is moving in this direction, I1 dl1, and this I2 dl2 is moving in this direction downwards. This is moving up, upwards. This is moving downwards. Okay. Yeah. So this is all about the brief figure here. So now let's see the concept. The magnetic field at point Z, the current element of point uh, one is given by dh2. That is, this is for, from this loop we can say that is given as dh2 is equal to I1 dl1 cross AR12. That is, AR12 represents the unit vector of this uh, uh, direction here, which is specified, divided by 4 pi into magnitude of R12 square. Okay, this is similar to the uh, uh, what to say, Coulomb's law derivation, where in the denominator part we need to be uh, ha having the square of the magnitude, that is R12 square of the two differential paths. Okay, so this in this way. The magnetic field at point Z due to current element is given by dh. Okay, this formula uh, you need to remember. So now differential force on differential current element is also given by differential force. So we it we assume it as ds vector that is given as I D L I D L cross D vector where this L is the length of this uh, two loop cross B. B represents the magnetic field intensity. Okay, therefore the differential the force on current element due to the point Z is also given by df2 is equal to i2 dl2 cross db2. Okay, so since here db2 is uh, corresponding to mu2 into dh2, that is, we know that b is, uh, is equal to mu, mu times h, that is the property of magnetic uh, field in the uh, magnetic flux density, which we are going to discuss uh, in a few minutes later. So, before that, only they have uh, uh, this relation that is db2 is equal to mu2 into dh2. So, this relation is again very important. This comes from the relation of v is equal to mu times h. That is, that is the relation of magnetic uh, flux density we need to be knowing. So, since I have not discussed it, I am going to discuss that in this uh, video only. Okay. So, to stay, stay tuned. So, we obtain force between two differential current elements. Okay. That is, the, the difference of that is derivative of this the differential current uh, force that is the df2 is equal to mu0 times I1, I2, that is the current uh, induced by these two loops, that is I1 and I2, divided by 4 pi into magnitude of R12 square, that is the direction of uh, propagation, its magnitude of R12 square, it's DL2 into DL1 cross AR12. Okay, this is given as the uh, uh, derivative of this differential current uh, element, differential force. So, therefore, the total force between two filamentary circuits is obtained by integrating twice. Okay. So here we have since we have here d into d, so we have d square. So in order to eliminate that d square, we need to integrate this twice. So so we can get our force. Okay. So that's why therefore force is equal to mu naught into i one i two divided by four pi take it outside it's a constant into the integral of this is a closed line integral line integral over a closed path is given by d l two cross again integration of d l one cross a r one a r one two divided by r one two square. Okay. So therefore, uh, if we simplify this, this is the term which we obtain. That is, uh, F force F is given by mu naught into I one into divided by four pi into 
integration of integration of again uh, dl2 uh, we need to take it uh, that side i've taken this uh, dl2 to other side cross dl2 we can see here integration of a r12 cross dl1 divided by magnitude of r12 square into dl2 so this is the relation of differential force uh, due to the differential current element so please note this formula down this is a very important uh, derivation and very important question also okay so this was all about force between differential current element okay hope you have understood this so now let's get to the concepts which you have skipped in module 3 okay those are very very important concepts so yeah this is a concept that is magnetization and permeability okay so hope it's visible the heading is magnetization and permeability okay so now what is this magnetization and permeability and what are the and, uh, what is the formula which we obtain through this uh, magnetization and permeability okay so the formula which you obtain through these are very very important because uh, those problems those formulas are used in the problem okay so magnetization and permeability so this is one flow path which is having a uh, which is uh, having from that point uh, uh, from the line of uh, path and we have drawn one closed path and from that point we have drawn one uh, line which is uh, corresponding to the closed path and it is moving in a particular set of direction and this is the surface defined by the closed path that is the outer circle is called as the surface divided by closed path and the inner path is uh, represented as ds and the the angle formed by the direction of propagation and the line of closed path is called as angle theta and here this small line here indicates the radius of the inner closed path okay and this is the current flowing through this closed path that is represented as id so this is all, this is all about the brief description of this figure so now the bound current ib circulates about the path enclosing a residential area of ps okay so you can see that the bound current ib circulates about this path okay enclosing a differential area so this uh, area of this uh, whole circle is called as a differential area and it is represented by ds establishing a dipole moment okay since uh, we have a dipole moment here so we can say that m is equal to and the dipole moment is represented as m is equal to ib into ds okay so if there are n magnetic dipoles per unit volume and we consider a volume of delta v then the total magnetic dipole moment is given by m total is equal to summation of i tending to 1 to n delta v m i okay so this is the total dipole moment is given therefore the magnetization m is represented as limit delta v tending to 0 we since we in, in order to eliminate the uh, delta v com component we are doing taking this limit 1 by delta v summation of i n into 1 to n delta v m i where this m i is the total magnetic dipole movement which is represented by m i so i is the magnetic dipole movement per volume okay so this magnetization is generally we can define as define as magnetic dipole movement per volume okay this is this is all this is all about magnetization now so from ampere circuit law we have uh, derived one uh, equation that is line integral of b by mu naught dot dl okay that is equal to h by h dot dl is equal to i okay since uh, b is equal to mu times h so in order to get h we need to do b by mu so that's why they have written in place of h b by mu naught okay where uh, this uh, i t represents the uh, i b into i where this i t is the total current as this is the current uh, uh, established uh, due to the dipole moment and which is flowing in this path plus the i that is the total uh, current i closed by the closed path okay yes. so now we can say that i is equal to i t minus i t from this equation that is i if we take it in one side so it will be i t minus i t is equal to uh, line integral of v by mu naught minus m dot dl okay now we define h in terms of uh, b and m that is magnetization and magnetic field intensity so therefore h is equal to b by mu naught minus m okay or b is equal to mu naught times h plus m or if we take this mu naught to other side and m to other side we will be getting b is equal to mu naught times h plus m in free space where magnetization is zero we will be getting this relation that is b is equal to mu naught times h okay so this is the relation which i was telling about that is b is equal to mu times h it uh, comes from the magnetic field intensity that is magnetic flux density V is equal to 
is directly proportional to magnetic field intensity with the constant of propagation which is called as the absolute permeability this do not represent the absolute permeability okay it comes from the relation of mu is equal to mu naught into mu r where mu naught is absolute permeability and mu r is relative permeability okay in case of electric field it is permittivity when it comes to magnetic field it is permeability okay yeah. in free space where magnetization is zero okay whenever the magnetization is zero we get this relation of v is equal to mu naught into h this is only for free space okay now for a linear isotropic media m is equal to sau m into h what is this sau this is not x okay sau okay sau is called as magnetic susceptibility okay sau m into h okay and this sau m is called as magnetic susceptibility okay this also have it has one uh, set of formula so this relation again you need to be remembering you know when, when we are solving problems this relation is very important that is magnetization for a linear isotropic media is given as m is equal to sau m into h where h where h is the magnetic field intensity and sau m is the magnetic susceptibility okay now v is equal to mu naught in this uh, equation mu naught into h plus uh, sau m into m okay so here uh, in place of uh, it's, uh, m uh, m now it will be sau m into n okay therefore v is equal to mu naught into mu r mu naught into mu r h okay so where mu r is equal to 1 plus sau m okay so that's why we are getting this relation v is equal to mu naught mu r into h where mu r is the relative permeability and it also has a one set of formula that is mu r is equal to 1 plus sau m okay please take down this uh, highlight these formulas and all in the box because uh, these formulas are very important because uh, we have direct problems related to this formula where they will be giving some values and we need to be finding those values okay so these formulas are very important so here b is equal to mu naught mu r into h where mu represents mu naught into mu r so i have told you that mu is equal to mu naught into mu r so therefore we can say that we get the relation of magnetic flux density and magnetic field intensity that is v is equal to mu times h okay so this was all about this derivation okay hope you understood this magnetization and permeability you can note it down pause the video and note it down if you want so let's get to the next uh, concept that is magnetic flux and magnetic flux density okay just now we have derived the formula for magnetic flux density so now let's see what is this magnetic flux and magnetic flux density okay we have already discussed about electric flux so now let's see what is this magnetic flux so magnetic flux and magnetic flux density so here just now we have got the relation that is b is equal to mu naught into h where b is the magnetic flux density i have told you h is called as magnetic field intensity and mu naught is called as permeability of free space okay this is only for free space or vacuum whenever is uh, whenever there is a permeability of free space or vacuum it is represented as mu naught and whenever we have only permeability in a, a uniform space okay so we can say that it is represented as mu so mu is equal to mu naught into mu r so this mu also has one uh, standard value which is not same uh, that is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 uh, h per m that is uh, 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 the unit of magnetic field intensity is the h okay it is represented h, h per m so mu so naught is equal to 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 in place of the uh, electric field we have epsilon naught and epsilon naught its value is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 right similarly we have a set uh, uh, set value for mu naught also that is represented as 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 so in electric field from Gauss law we know that uh, what psi is equal to surface integral of d dot d okay also in magnetic field we write the analog of situation that is uh, we are doing one change as that is in place of psi we represent it as pi and pi is equal to surface integral of in place of uh, electric uh, flux density we add now magnetic flux density that is uh, d dot ds okay but in magnetic field the magnetic flux lines are closed and uh, uh, do, do not terminate on magnetic charge okay in place of electric field so in case of uh, electric field the uh, electric field flux lines are uh, terminate on the uh, one of the electric charge but in case of magnetic field the magnetic flux lines are closed and they do not terminate on the magnetic charge so this is one difference between the electric field and magnetic field therefore the surface integral of v dot ds is equal to zero in this case so there won't be any magnetic charge okay so that's why this pi is equal to zero in this case 
So therefore, we can say one relation that is surface integral of z dot ds is equal to zero. Okay. So similarly, in point form, in point form, if we represent this equation, we will be getting del dot b is equal to zero. Okay. But in case of electric field, what was the relation? That is del dot b is equal to rho b. Okay. So where rho b is the volume charge density. But here, in case of magnetic field, one more relation that is del dot b is equal to zero. Okay. And also, surface integral of b dot ds is equal to zero. And the reason is the magnetic charge is uh, in the, due to the magnetic flux lines which are, are closed and they do not terminate on the magnetic charge at all. So therefore, the amount of magnetic charge would be nullified. Therefore, phi would be equal to zero. Therefore, we are getting this relation. Surface integral of b dot ds is equal to zero. If we represent this equation in point form, we will be getting one more equation that is del dot b is equal to zero. So please highlight these two equations because uh, these two equations are very very important. Okay. So this is in integral form and point form. So therefore, the surface integral of b dot ds is equal to zero is a Maxwell's equation in integral form from Gauss law, and this del dot b is equal to zero is a, Max, a Maxwell's equation in point form from Gauss law. Okay. So these are the two equations which we have seen here in this video. So please note it down. Um, these are very very important. So this is all about magnetic flux and magnetic flux density. So we have compared magnetic flux with respect to electric flux and we have seen few of the terms. So please note it down. Okay, this is again very, very important. Magnetic flux and magnetic flux density. So we can note it down. So that's all for this session. Hope you understood some concepts. And uh, from in the next session, we are going to solve a few problems. And uh, we are going to wind up uh, module four very soon. Okay. So please uh, like, share, subscribe, comment on your opinion. It is very, very important. You need to uh, comment your opinions about how you are understanding this video. So please like, share, subscribe, and also refer our playlist. So we have uh, the, uh, downloading the model question paper playlist for you all. You can refer them, and the model question paper or solutions are uh, given to you all. You can uh, see, uh, see the playlist and you can refer them. Okay. So you will be appearing on the right of your screen now. Yeah, see the playlist we have created. All the model paper solutions are there for all the subjects, not only electromagnetic theory, control system, principles of communication system, microcontroller. Okay, these four four subjects you can refer it down and please share this these playlists to a huge number so that you will be getting a great response and you would be understanding the video very well. Okay, so that's all. Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you.